class. Namaste and welcome. How are you? Good. I'm very well, too. I hope that you're really following the series and, and practicing every day. And I hope that you're really seeing that your body is getting stronger and more flexible and that the exercises are, are becoming easier for you. Do you find that? Many of you ask me if you would, uh, what I think about any of the Hatha Yoga classes here in this country and uh, would I recommend it? I definitely would. If you really enjoy this class, and I hope that you do and want to have a teacher who watch over you and sort of uh, correct you a little bit more than, than I can, by all means, uh, look in your yellow pages of, of your phone book, and if perhaps you don't have a yoga class registered there, the YWCA or the YMCA or the adult education pro programs in most parts of the country have really fine, fine teachers. And our caliber of teaching is really coming up tremendously as the years go on that the teachers are getting better and better because all of us really realize that we, all of us that teach, uh, we must continue our own study. We must continue to grow in whatever situation we're in. It's, it's no fun unless you continue to grow and to learn. And that, that, that goes for a lot of things, doesn't it? I know that you know that. May I share a letter with you, a few letters with you? I'm just going to reach out of the, out of your living room for a second, and uh, <clears throat> I love to have you write, as I've said, it helps me a lot. Let me just start with, uh, one is going to have, we'll, we'll, we'll work with an exercise, and the other one is just simply saying something about herself, and perhaps it, it might encourage you, if you are perhaps in this situation. This is from, uh, from someone who, in my, uh, Arizona class, and uh, I'll take this time now to say hello, Arizona class, and how are you? I haven't forgotten you all. I was in a serious automobile accident five years ago, and I've been feeling very sorry for myself and le eating like there was no tomorrow. I weighed in at 170 pounds and only 33 years old and getting fatter and fatter. Four weeks later, I am 34, and I, have, and I now weigh 155 pounds. A lot of that I give credit to you and to your Hatha Yoga classes. It has made me more aware of myself and of my body. So I, I, um, I think she's giving me more credit than I do, I, I can take. I think it's all of you that are working so hard on losing some weight that, um, that you know you really had to need to tackle and now's the time to do it and you are starting with some, a type of exercise that is excellent for, for one, for releasing tension, but two, also getting into your entire nervous system, I mean really deeply into your nervous system, but also into the glands and organs of the body and having them function better. When we're functioning better in the thyroid area, in the abdominal cavity, in the, the glands of the body are functioning better, a lot of the weight will come off of its, on its own slowly and gradually uh, it isn't going to come without watching your diet, but uh, a lot of mental peace will come from Hatha Yoga study. And whereas we would snack because you don't feel, you feel rather lost occasionally, this is why I overeat sometimes, is when I can feel down, I'm my, the icebox is my friend. Uh, you'll find that a lot of those feelings will, will disappear. And they'll go very gradually, and you'll say, my goodness, where did that go? And all of a sudden, the, a lot of the weight will be gone. Keep at it, though. All of you that are, that are working on this problem, all of you, many of you, I know. I have lots of mail that tells me about this uh, weight problem. And this is a nice letter, too. And she also says, when we do leg stretches and pulls, the back of my legs feel very painful and stiff. This type of pain is very discouraging. Let's cope with that right now. Do you feel discouraged occasionally when you feel uh, oh, the ligaments of the back of the legs? You think, oh, they can't, they'll never loosen up. Well, let's work with that now, all right? Let's lie down and we'll work with some discomfort and how, how to work with it better. I, notice I said discomfort and I didn't say pain, all right? Pain is very much in your body as a warning signal and it's there to say, no, this isn't, I've gone too far, or no, this is not the right thing for me to do. Listen to your body. Listen if you have pain. 
but stretch and discomfort from that well let's again work from it lie down <clears throat> and we'll start with the back of the legs and it doesn't necessarily it doesn't mean that it's your age uh, it doesn't make a difference whether you're male or female though although men in the back of the legs have a very hard time stretching we seem to be a little bit limber the female uh, of this world seems to be a little bit more limber able to stretch easier but coping with it is, is very important so first let's start with the uh, just do Vakran Asana and we'll work with the legs slowly <clears throat> all right bend your right knee to your chest all right bend the right knee to your chest so we'll first go in the opposite direction and we'll start by bringing the hands over the outside of your lower leg Pull your shoulders down from your ears and flex your, le your right foot and gently press the thigh towards your abdomen and then release. Thigh towards your abdomen and then release and towards the abdomen and then release. Now I'm going to straighten my leg and here we come to the problem. <clears throat> and if you'll just look here for a second, just look at my leg. When I started out in Hatha Yoga, the back of the leg was, it was very hard to straighten out any more than this. And if, uh, with some time and some effort, I began if by, in this gentle uh, bouncing motion that I was in control of and that I want you to be in control of, I could little by little start straightening the leg and start uh, working on this by gentle bouncing coming to your maximum stretch and then releasing. Never a great big because <clears throat> that could really tear some muscles or some ligaments in the back of your thighs. Let's um, try to work gradually now on the back of the legs. It's a very stubborn spot, the back of the knees. Place your hands behind the back of your thighs. Entwine your fingers together back there. Now bend your knee and flex your foot, right? Now straighten your knees slowly and bring the hands up behind the knee, a little bit further behind the knee. Straighten your arms and push the ceiling up with the heel of your foot. Now release, bend the knee. That simple uh, movement of straighten the knee, flex the foot, just go as far as you can without a whole lot of, sh when you start to shake tremendously, just let it go. I don't want the shakes there. Just come to your maximum where it feels quite uncomfortable, then release. All right, now, how about following me a few times and we'll just work the back of the legs. Hands behind your thighs and now straighten your knees. Hold the ceiling up with the heel of your foot and then release. Move the hand up towards the knee. Straighten the knee. Flex your foot and release. Now up, bend and straighten, bend and straighten, bend and straighten, bend and straighten. Now by now you can probably really feel the back of the legs. So you've had enough and then come down. Lower the leg slowly as we've done before, flattening the foot, keep the arch out of your lower back as you lower the leg. And then observe. <clears throat> a posture that we're working towards is a, 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 a deeper stretch, it's a much more intense stretch, and I'll show you with the other leg if you'd like to see. It's this stretch, and I think it's called Shiva's Couch. I don't know why it's called that, but it's, I think the name of the posture translated is Shiva's Couch. You're grabbing a hold of the big toe, you keep the back of the leg, hands, the opposite hand in the thigh, and then you pull the forehead to the knee with the leg straight. You hold, and then you release. But in the beginning, we're a long way from that, and it would be just terrible to push you into that posture way too early. So that's why we work gradually and slowly, working with the discomfort in the body. It does go away, it does get better. I still have discomfort in postures, all right? If that's encouraging to you. Left knee. Let's work now, bringing the hands behind, oh, I know, I want to work the, with the thigh first. So bring the hands on top of your lower leg, one hand over the other, and press your thigh to your abdomen, and then release. Press and release, and press and release, 
Just press it close to your abdominal area, flex your left foot, and then release. And now straighten the back of your knee. Place the hand behind the back of your thigh or the knee if you're comfortable. And it's a right, it's, this is a 90 degree angle at this point. All right, now release the knee, relax your foot. Okay, is your knee relaxed? Should be comfortable. Now go to your maximum stretch. Not a painful, uh, a, a real tearing pain. It's just to your own maximum discomfort. All right, then stretch the knee, flex your foot, and then release. Now straighten and release, and straighten, release. Straighten and release, and once more, straighten and release. Now add a little bit more if you can, if you're getting more limber. Bring the hands up a little bit higher towards the calf, and with the knee straight, a gentle bouncing stretch towards your chest. Bounce, release, bounce, release. And a few more times. And then hold the ceiling up with the heel of your foot and lower the leg to the floor. Remember, always both hips are flat on the floor as you lower your leg to the floor. <clears throat> and now relax, class. Pull your shoulders down from your ears, the palms turned upwards. And I just want to thank you for writing me those two very encouraging type of letters. I, if you'd like, perhaps if you haven't written me, drop me a, a note and maybe I can use your letter on the air. It does help others and it's really encouraging to other people. Now, class, observe what you've brought with you today. How does this body feel? What does it feel like? How easy is it for you to relax? How easy is it for you to give up your daily tension and in its place allow energy to flow? Let's try to do now some tension relieving exercises. Bring your feet together, arms over your head, hands making two separate fists. Lock the knees, raise your hips off of the floor an inch, just an inch. Squeeze your buttock muscles together Tighten your thighs, squeeze your eyes, lock your elbows, squeeze your eyes and mouth, and relax. Relax, relax, relax. Exhaling the air through the nose, and inhale, breathe deeply, nice deep breath, and exhale, slow, smooth exhalation. Place your hands behind the back of your head clasp. Just bring, lift your head, place the hands back of your head. And then just placing just gentle pressure now on the back of your head. Bring your chin to your throat. Bring your chin to your throat and hold. And hold, just letting the back of your neck stretch out very gradually. And then lower the, the back of the head to the floor. Now place your hands underneath the cervical arch, that's this upper seven vertebra of your spine. Place both hands comfortably, elbows on the floor, bring both knees together. You all with me? All right, hands, our palms are flat underneath the neck, elbows on the floor, knees are together. Place your thumbs forward, just place your thumbs so they're over your, over the uh, uh, shoulders. And now bring both knees down underneath your right arm, and up to your chest and the opposite side and up and we'll go one more time side to side and side to side keep your elbows on the floor now bring both knees down to your right and look over your opposite shoulder class look all way around your opposite shoulder Bring both knees to your chest and both knees now down to your left. Keep your, sh your, now if your elbow has come up, place your elbow on the floor, shoulders on the floor. A tremendous stretch for these intercostal muscles now all down the rib cage. And look over your opposite shoulder and take a breath. And expand, it should be a wonderful stretch across your chest. And exhale. And bring both knees to your chest. One hand, both hands now over the mid part of your lower leg. Take a breath. Exhaling forehead to knee position now. Relax your shoulders. Relax the shoulders. Forehead to knee. Use more tummy muscle. 
and less hands. Use the hands just for balance. Hold, don't hold your breath, and head to the floor. And now hold the ceiling up with the heels of your feet. Hold the ceiling up now with the heels of your feet. And here with both legs bent, or rather straight, you can place the hands behind the back of your calves and lift your hips up off of the ground. Keep your knees straight, but lift the hips up and get a rocking motion going, but keep the knees straight. This is a little bit more advanced here. Keep the heels flat and stretching out gradually the back of the legs. A couple more times. And then hold the ceiling up with the heels of your feet. Legs apart in a V. Legs apart in a V. Stretch now. Point the toe and stretch with the toes. Stretch. Now bring both feet together. Now we're going to walk across your ceiling. All right, walk across your ceiling. This is a fine exercise for strengthening the lower back, firming the thighs, and keeping the heels flat. Walk, 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 walk. A few more times now. Walk vigorously, keeping the knees straight or slightly bent. Go at your own speed. A couple more times now. A couple more times, bringing that toe close to, to the back of your head. Keep going a few more times now. Hold the ceiling up with the heels of your feet and take a breath. And exhale, lower the legs slowly down to the floor, keeping the arch out of your back, flattening your feet, exhaling as you go, and relax, feet apart. Arms well away from the body. Exhaling the air. Inhale, draw the knees up and the feet flat on the floor. Take a breath and raise arms over your head and you'll come up into a sitting position. Take a breath. And on your exhalation, raise arms, head, shoulders, contract abdomen, and then sit up. All right, class. That's warming up, but it's also uh, uh, strengthening up, too. And work, work hard on those, won't you? Especially if we meet only once a week. Really work hard on your conditioning exercises. Class, will you, I'm going to slowly get us up into standing position, but we're, we seems to me we need work on stretching out the back of the legs. The dog posture, or dog stretch, is a, quite an advanced posture. And this is a beginning, uh, a, a, a preliminary to it. If you come onto your knees, place the hands flat on the floor. It is as if you are in your table position. The knees are together, and they are parallel to your hips. The palms of the hands are flat on the floor. And if you'll just watch here, let me demonstrate it. This is going into Mukhasana, your dog stretch. And all I do is I just straighten my knees and stretch the heels to the floor. Place the knees back on the floor, and it's this type of a motion, and then back down. Uh, don't try terribly hard to push or force the heels to the floor. Again, you go to your own maximum stretch. All right, now, are you in your table posture? Pull the tummy up. Pull it up. Don't let your tummy hang down. Okay, now, head straight, and this time, don't watch here. Just listen to my words. Straighten your knees. Bring the seat up to the ceiling. Gently push with your hands to get a good stretch down the back of your legs. Wherever the heels may go, just let them be. And back down to the floor. Take a breath, inhale. Exhale, straighten the knees. He bring the heels just a little bit further towards the floor. And back down. The next time I do this now, I'm going to add the stomach lift and see if you can keep the air out totally now as you exhale, then relax your abdomen and feel the, the abdominal muscles suck themselves right up into your spine. So this whole abdominal area will make itself a cavity and it should feel very, very good. Uh, yeah, I should use a warning here. If the uh, stomach lift, if you've had abdominal surgery or are pregnant, that isn't something to do for pregnancy. All right now, straighten the knees and the heels just gently to the floor. Now take a breath, class, inhale, 
Exhale, out your air, out, 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 out. Keep the mouth closed, relax your abdomen, and try and pull it right up to your spine. <sighs> try and suck it right up to your spinal column and see if it just doesn't go up of its own accord. And then relax, but you can see if you relax, it still stays up there, doesn't it? Now, class, walk your hands towards your feet. Try and keep your knees straight. Walk your hands until you've had enough. No pain here, a stretch, but no pain until both hands all line up. Should we try that once again? And I'll sort of turn, my, turn myself around here. I was in this dog stretch. You come on down to the dog stretch, too. Now walk your hands towards your feet. And you're slowly walking yourself up to the standing position. Now round your spinal column, drop your head, and we'll come rolling up into your standing position. Rolling up and up and up. If I have, um, if you didn't feel anything for that abdominal lift, okay. Well, it, it will happen. I don't want to spend too much time on it today, but we will spend more time on it at, a, at another class. Nidambasana, a side stretch. Nice to loosen up the sides of the body, a wonderful stretch, very invigorating posture, especially if you have sort of a case of the blahs today and you really need a little bit more energy. Bring your feet together. Bring the feet together, arms over your head. Keep your head between your upper arms. Now stretch with the little finger. Really stretch so you open the armpit and open the rib cage. And stretch now to the left. Keep your head between, pull your shoulder back, class, don't lean forward. Just stretch directly to your left and come up. Now reach towards the ceiling with your fingers. Reach, extend yourself and come down now to the left. And hold, breathe, shall we? And come up. Once more, let's reach now right to the ceiling. Reach up to the ceiling, contract your buttock muscle and lift the chest up to the ceiling. Lift the chest up and head straight. It's very, uh, our awareness must increase in anything that we do in our arch backwards. One is to take a full, complete breath before you go back, so there's no lightheadedness. And the other is to always keep the lumbar vertebra here, of the lumbar area, free from any pain. So let's try this again. And you keep the freedom of your lower back by thinking upwards. All right, let's try that once again. <clears throat> Going back in the arch, you're thinking your chest upwards. Arms straight up to the ceiling. Tighten your seat muscle. This protects, again, your lower back. Inhale. Head between the upper arms. Lift the sternum up and reach with it up to the ceiling. Tighten the seat and head straight. All right, and lower your arms now slowly to the floor, to the, on either side. Take a breath now, take a deep breath. Inhale, breathe deeply. Exhaling, slow, smooth exhalation. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Exhale out all tightness from the body and inhale. Breathe in energy in and in and into the body. Feel that this is happening. You're gathering it to you. And now exhale, any tightness, any tension from the body any fatigue out and once more inhale slowly and smoothly in with the mouth closed and exhale slow smooth exhalation out and out now get all the stale air out of the lower lobes of the lungs feet apart class feet apart about three feet and just turn the toes outwards turn the toes outwards place your hands in at the prayer position in the chest and here what we're going to do is just for the thighs and for the inner thigh is bend the knees and really push the knees outwards. Push the knees outwards, come down as far as you can without leaning forward. And straight spine, and then pull the inside of the knees together and then relax. Try, we'll try this two times and don't be lazy here. Palms of the hands together, keep the spine straight. And now bend the knees, pulling the knees outwards, keeping your spinal column straight. And now pull the thighs together as you bring the knees together. Don't cheat and just sort of do it lackadaisically. One more time now, class. Inhale. 
and exhale bend the knees pull the knees outwards come down don't leave, let your heels come off the ground and now pull the knees together use the inner thigh use the inner thighs you really want to feel that feet straight ahead and lie down please lie down assume sarvasana feet well apart pull your shoulders down from your ears the palms are turned upwards press the arch out of your lower back and release any tension from the lower back pull your shoulder blades towards your spinal column and release then any tension from your shoulders and from your facial area class the principle of relaxation is really very simple it's first to focus your attention down to your legs second is to give suggestion of relaxation to the legs and third is to pause to feel the sensation of relaxation in the legs now see if you cannot feel this as we focus the attention down to the legs the skin the muscles of the thighs the knees and the feet and the calves then give suggestion that the leg relax and feel it almost elongate now into your arms focus the attention there give suggestion that the arms relax then feel the sensation of relaxation the arms getting longer now all across your chest your back and all across your face give suggestion you're in control of your own body that's one of our goals to be in control of us you're in control of you relaxing the jaw muscle the mouth all across your forehead and really spending some time on relaxation we'll do more next class thank you keep it with you namaste <laughs>